Hi, I'm Beth Martinez, Chief of Staff and Strategic Planning for Fort Bend ISD, and I'm going to provide an update on where we have been with the attendance boundary planning process and what our next steps are. I'll also be sharing the presentation with Scott Leopold from Cooperative Strategies, who will lead you through the details of the various boundary options in each of these scenarios. During this presentation, I'll share information about the boundary planning timeline, more details about our community engagement process, and Scott will provide detailed information about the various boundary options we're sharing with the community for feedback during the week of December 10th. We'll also discuss next steps in the planning process. Earlier this fall, we began the attendance boundary planning process associated with establishing the attendance boundary for elementary 51 in the Aliana community and for balancing high school enrollment in the southeast portion of the district. To date, we have engaged with focus groups from both of these areas of the district. Prior to the Thanksgiving break, we launched the application process for three focus groups, one for elementary 51, another for elementary school 53 or classroom additions at Austin Parkway, Commonwealth Elementary and Settlers Way Elementary to relieve Commonwealth Elementary overutilization and balance enrollment in the central portion of the district, as well as the focus group for balancing high school enrollment in the southeast portion of the district. On Friday before the break, we notified principals and parents in the central portion of the district that we would be delaying the boundary planning process for this area until we have a clear path forward regarding land negotiations for elementary 53. We're currently in the feedback phase of the planning process, which will take us through January 2nd, 2019. During November, we recruited focus group members from the elementary school attendance areas in proximity to elementary school 51 and from each of the high schools in the southeast portion of the district, Elkins, Hightower, Marshall, Ridgepoint, and Willow Ridge. Staff reviewed the focus group applications and selected members based on objective criteria, feedback from references, and to ensure the group reflected the geographic makeup of the area. For example, it was important that the focus group for Elementary 51 included representation from a neighborhood that was in very close proximity to Elementary School 51, but in the current Lakeview Elementary attendance boundary. We wanted to give members of each of these focus groups an opportunity to learn more about the process and to share expectations about their role in the process, so we held a focus group orientation on November 27th. During the orientation, we explained that the role of the focus group would be to review preliminary boundary options in alignment with board policy FC Local and to provide input that staff would use to refine options before sharing with the full community for further feedback. The focus groups met on separate evenings to review options and provide input following the orientation. Ultimately, the focus groups not only provided useful input on the preliminary options, asked important questions about the process and the individual campuses, they also helped to create additional options. The Elementary 51 focus group met on the 28th of November and the High School Balancing focus group met on the 29th. Following the focus group for high school, members requested a second meeting and that meeting convened again last week to review questions and provide further input on the high schools in the southeast portion of the district. During the week of December 10th, we will present the boundary options to the community online and hold three information meetings. The meetings will be held in three areas of the district, starting at Marshall High School on December the 11th, Travis High School on Wednesday, December 12th, and Elkins High School on Thursday, December 13th. This presentation will be shared each night beginning at 7 p.m. in the auditorium of each school. The same video presentation will be posted online beginning December the 11th. Following this presentation, participants will have the opportunity to view boundary options on large maps in the cafeteria of each school and to provide feedback through an online survey. Staff will have iPads available for survey completion during the school meetings. The boundary presentations and online survey will be available online at fortbendisd.com slash boundary planning December the 11th through January the 2nd. Scott Leopold with Cooperative Strategies will now share the boundary options that will be presented to the community for feedback. First, I'd like to begin by talking about some of the feedback they received from the focus groups. One of the questions that came up is, are we trying to balance utilization among the five schools for as long as possible? or are we simply trying to keep enrollment down at Ridgepoint until we can open the new high school, number 12? Uh, the answer is yes, we have options that do both of these things. Uh, there was also a lot of discussion around programs and their potential impact on the options. Uh, what a lot of the group members discussed was that uh, if the overall enrollment at some of the high schools were to increase, that would 
naturally bring additional programming that may not exist there today just by adding more students. Uh, some of the focus group members wanted to include more high schools than just Elkins, Hightower, Marshall, Ridgepoint, and Willow Ridge. And some of the focus group members also felt that the design capacities were a little high. Here's our existing boundaries for this area of the district. Uh, Elkins is highlighted in the yellow color, Ridgepoint in the purple or pink, Hightower in the green, Willow Ridge in the blue, and Marshall in the gray. Uh, it should be noted that also the thick purple lines denote the, the high school boundaries and on top of some of them you can see these orange lines which are the middle school boundaries. The thin red lines with the numbers in them are the planning units and so those are the planning unit number, number of high school students currently enrolled, the five-year projection and the ten-year projection by planning unit. And so you can see looking at some of these we don't have any students now but we're projected to have almost 200 students in five years and 650 students in 10 years. And so you can see the scale of growth that we have in some of these planning units. Here's our current enrollment and utilization for the high schools with our new capacity that we show. Uh, again, this is if we don't have any changes. And so this is just status quo. Uh, we've noted what the temporary capacity is at each facility, but it is not included in the design capacity, just there for reference. And we also show the current number of students that would be coming in or out due to academies. And so overall, Elkins has a net loss of 121 students, and that's because it has a lot more students that leave to go to math and science at Dulles than come in for engineering. Uh, Hightower has a net gain of 310 students. It has the medical and digital media academies there. Marshall has a net loss of 98 students. Ridgepoint 80, has a net loss of 84, and Willow Ridge a net loss of 67. Uh, then we show our enrollment, and so the, the focus point here is looking at Ridgepoint. Ridgepoint is currently right around 2,800 students. It's projected to eclipse 4,000 in 2024-25 and almost 5,000 students in 28-29. And so if we look at the overall utilization, Elkins uh, in pretty good shape right now. It reaches 100% in 25-26. Uh, Hightower, uh, 78, and then to 82, into the 80s, and uh, relatively flat. Marshall, 50%, projected to increase slightly, but really stay in the 50s. Ridgepoint, 108%, up to 150% in 23-24, and then 191% in 28-29. Uh, Willow Ridge, 52%, projected to decline slightly over time. Uh, if we look at our overall uh, percentage of economically disadvantaged students, uh, these are the same number, just from an options template, but 26% at Elkins, 58% at Hightower, 75% at Marshall, 22% at Ridgepoint, and 80% at Willow Ridge. The average of all of these is 45%. Before we get into the options, there's just a few points I wanna highlight. Uh, per policy, any high school boundary changes would be phased in beginning with ninth grade. And so as we go through modeling this, we're modeling changes starting with ninth grade next year and then phasing in over four years. Uh, our design capacities do not include any portable buildings. Uh, the current academy enrollment is reflected to maintain constant throughout the options unless we other, otherwise note it. If we look at the overall enrollment and combined capacity of the five high schools, uh, we're projected to reach 94% within 10 years. The projected growth within the Ridgepoint feeder pattern has accelerated since last year's projection. Ridgepoint is now projected to have nearly 5,000 students within its current boundary by 2829. The soonest high school 12 can open would be the fall of 2024. Again, I do want to reiterate that we are going through four different options, but as we collect the feedback on the survey, uh, there will be questions about components of options. And so we may, again, based on feedback, take some of these apart and reassemble them into different options uh, that we would then take to the board for discussion. And so they're not complete packages that we're asking for your feedback on. We want to know how you feel about all components as well. Now we'll begin option one. Uh, we'll start with the existing boundaries and then fade on the options. Fade back the existing boundaries. Then highlight the areas that change. And so starting with Elkins, the Elkins zone would be outlined in this yellow color. The dotted lines indicate the middle school zones. In option one, Schiff Elementary would continue to feed through Baines, but instead of feeding to Ridgepoint, it would feed into Elkins. 
Rich Point of this option would be left with Siena Crossing Elementary, Scanlon Oaks, and Thornton Elementary Schools, feeding into the current middle schools, Baines and Thornton, and then into Ridge Point. All of Heritage Rose, which currently feeds both Baines and, and Thornton, would feed 100% into Hightower High School. In order to make room for all of those students coming into Hightower, all of Parks Elementary would feed into Willow Ridge through Lake Olympia Middle School, along with Palmer, the portion that is currently feeding into Hightower. <laughs> they would then feed into Willow Ridge. The other portion of Palmer, the Lake Olympia subdivision, would feed into Lake Olympia Middle School and then to Marshall, Quail Valley Middle School and its feeding elementary schools, Quail Valley Elementary and Lantern Lane, would feed into Marshall as well. Looking at the data associated with option one, this is a very good balance of enrollment between all of the high schools. By full implementation, all five of the high schools would be enrolled at over 2,000 students. Looking at the overall utilization, we've got a very good balance of utilization between all of the high schools. High Tower would reach 100% in 2028-29, and Ridge Point would reach 102%. If we look at the socioeconomic balance, Elkins would go from 26% to 12, High Tower from 58% to 61. I'll talk about that after I go through this. Marshall would go from 75% down to 60, Ridge Point from 22% down to 8. Willow Ridge from 80% down to 70. Uh, we do see this increase in economically disadvantaged students at High Tower, but because of the growth areas that are drawn into that boundary in this option, that that percentage would likely drop significantly over time. Another piece of data that we wanted to show and illustrate for each option is what the composition of the proposed zones would be based on the current and projected students. And so the way this works is the percentages across the top, and then we show the counts of students that would be in the proposed zones in the 2022-23 school year. And so the Elkin zone uh, in 2022-23 would be roughly 75% uh, students that would have gone to Elkins, and about 25% of the student body would be students that would have come from Ridge Point. Uh, looking at High Tower, uh, High Tower would be pretty close to 50-50, but we would have slightly more students from Ridge Point than we, we would that would have been at High Tower. Uh, Marshall would be about 65% um, Marshall, about 35% Elkins. Uh, Ridge Point would be, again, 100% Ridge Point. Uh, Willow Ridge would be pretty close to 50-50, maybe 53% Willow Ridge and 47% uh, High Tower. And so this just gives you an idea of of what the composition would look like at, uh, at each of these schools. Uh, we also need to note in this option that the, uh, the high tower number, uh, it does include those academy students staying. And so the academy students are in that 884 number uh, at high tower. So what does this option do? It balances utilization enrollment among the five schools over the next nine years without any school exceeding 100% of utilization of the design capacity. It moves rather large groups of students, avoiding small, isolated cohorts. It has the highest utilization of Marshall and Willow Ridge when compared to all the other options. And it positions the boundaries such that most of the future growth is pointed at High Tower. And the rezoning process related to High School 12 would likely impact High Tower more than any of the other schools. And likely students that aren't in the system yet and that have not been rezoned before. Now we'll begin with option two. First, our current boundaries, then our changes. We'll fade back the existing boundaries and then fade in the areas that change. Uh, option two is different than option one. Option one is very impactful and fully balances utilization. The purpose of option two is to make the minimal amount of change possible to just keep Ridge Point below 3,000 students until we get to 2024-25. Uh, in order to do this, we would move Schiff Elementary and the portion of Heritage Rose that currently feeds into Baines, so Heritage Rose that is either north or off of Route 6, and they would move, those areas would move into High Tower. In order to make room for that, we'd have to move the academies currently at High Tower, so the Medical Academy and the Digital Media Academy would have to come out. In this option, the Medical Academy, mo academy moves to Marshall, the Digital Media 
Academy moves to Willow Ridge. We also have this small area that is currently zoned to High Tower would also move to Willow Ridge because it doesn't include any students and it's in close, closer proximity to Willow Ridge. Here's our data associated with option two. Uh, in this option, Elkins is completely unchanged. Uh, there's some changes at High Tower. If we look at the utilization, we go from 78 to 70 and then to 81. Uh, 91 100 percent and then right over 100 percent all the way out uh, marshall uh, minor changes due to moving that academy in uh, ridge point would really maintain its current levels until 23 24 and it would exceed 119 percent in 24 25 which is as soon as we could have that 12th high school open and so again this option is focused on just kind of maintaining our current levels as much as possible at, at ridge point with a minimal amount of impact uh, looking at the socioeconomics, again, Elkins is unchanged. Uh, High Tower will go from 58 to 51%. Uh, Marshall will be unchanged. It may change slightly with the academy program moving in. Uh, we couldn't really model that because uh, those students kind of come from everywhere. Uh, Ridge Point would go from 22% to 16. Again, Willow Ridge we show as being the same, but it may reduce slightly with the academy program moving in. Here's our composition data for option two. As you can see, um, Elkins remains unchanged, and so it is it is entirely Elkins, 100%. Uh, high tower would be about 66 or 67% high tower, and uh, 33 or 34% uh, ridge point. Uh, looking at Marshall, it would have its current, uh, this, these 1,477 students represent its current zone. Uh, we would have an additional 286 students coming in from the academy if we're just talking look just looking at the academy program the, the medical academy at high tower uh, ridge point remains at you know 100 ridge point uh, willow ridge we would have a small portion coming in from high tower and those 89 students are from that area that's off of lake columbia parkway that hasn't developed yet but uh, there's anticipated to be 89 high school students in there by 22 23. we'd also have 138 students coming in from the uh, digital media academy and so, again, this just gives you an idea of what that composition of each school would look like in option two. So in summary, uh, this option is kind of a minimal impact option. Uh, we're doing the least amount of change in order to keep Ridgepoint at its current levels until 2425. Uh, it would require both the movement of the medical and digital media academies at High Tower. Uh, it does not significantly increase the utilization at Marshall or Willow Ridge. And it would require significant boundary changes again when we have uh, boundary changes for high school 12 happening. Here's option three, starting with our current boundaries. Here's our proposed boundaries. We'll fade back the current. And you can see the change areas. And so starting with Elkins, uh, Schiff Elementary School again will be added into Elkins. Uh, Elkins would continue to have four middle schools feeding it, Fort Settlement, First Colony, Link Olympia, and Baines. Sienna Crossing, along with the Baines portion of Heritage Rose, would then feed into High Tower, uh, leaving this kind of southern portion of Ridge Point intact. And so we'd have Scanlon Oaks, Leonetti, and the portion of Heritage Rose, which currently feeds into Thornton, feeding into Ridge Point. Thornton would be a 100% feeder into Ridge Point. In order to make room in High Tower, parks would have to come out along with uh, that new area off of Lake Columbia Parkway feeding into Willow Ridge. Quail Valley in this scenario would also move from Elkins into Marshall. Looking at our data associated with this option, um, Elkins uh, is a little bit better utilized. Uh, we're a little lower, so 91% uh, in the high 80s and then back up into the 90s, but we don't exceed 100% uh, like we do at the current boundary. Uh, high Tower, currently 78%, projected to go to 82, 89, 94, and then 101%. Uh, it should be noted that in this scenario, uh, both of the academies at High Tower remain. And so if either of those academies were to relocate, we could easily keep High Tower below 100%. Uh, Marshall in this option, uh, 50%, 60, 70, 78, up into the 80s, and then you know right around 80, 79%. Uh, ridge point in this option would go 108%, 99, 91, 83, 74, 80, 87, 93, 100, and then up to 107 and 115%. Uh, this is one of those uh, 
options that could have some tiered changes associated with it so we don't have such a low drop here we may be able to start some of those changes a year or two later so that we don't have this drop into the 70s uh, looking at willow ridge uh, willow ridge ago 52 56 60 66 75 and then stay in the 70s throughout the end of the projection uh, looking at the socioeconomic balance elkins would go from 26 to 14 percent High Tower from 58 to 42, Marshall from 75 to 64, Ridge Point from 22 down to 20, Willow Ridge from 80 down to 75. Here's our composition data for option three. And so you can see at Elkins, we're about, again, 75% Elkins, 25% Ridge Point. Uh, high Tower is pretty much right at 50-50. You know, maybe 51% High Tower, 49% Ridge Point, uh, Marshall, 35% Elkins, 65% Marshall, uh, Ridge Point, you know, maintains 100%. Uh, looking at Willow Ridge, uh, pretty close to 4060, uh, but you can see we'd have around 760 High Tower students that would have gone to High Tower, uh, and then Willow Ridge is 1220. So what does this option do? Uh, this moves the northern portion of the current Ridge Point High School boundary to either Elkins or Hightower. Uh, the less developed southern portion would remain at Ridge Point. It does increase utilization at Marshall and Willow Ridge, but it would likely require extensive changes when High School 12 opens because it would likely impact what is remaining at Ridge Point in this option. Okay, so here's option four, starting with the current boundaries, then our proposed boundaries fading back the current, and then showing the areas that would move. And so this boundary is a little different. So looking at Elkins, uh, again, we'd have uh, Route 6 kind of as that boundary. And then we would take all of Ridge Point that is north of the railroad tracks and west of Siena Parkway would feed into Elkins. East of Siena Parkway would feed into High Tower along with um, that Heritage Roads portion that is north of Six. In order to make room for all those students, we'd have to take all of Palmer, so including the Elkins portion and the High Tower portion, would feed through Lake Olympia into Willow Ridge. Uh, in this scenario, Quail Valley would also feed into Marshall. Looking at the numbers associated with this option, uh, in this particular scenario, uh, we do have a little bit of overutilization at Elkins. We hit 103% in 2324. Uh, again, this does include the Engineering Academy staying at Elkins. If the Engineering Academy were to move to, to a different school and all the students were to go, uh, we would have Elkins around 101% at maximum through the 10 years of the projection. Uh, high tower we have at 78 percent going to 81 88 92 96 staying in the 90s for the rest of the projection uh, marshall again would get up into the 80s uh, and, and stay around there ridge point again with that that bottom half uh, remaining at ridge point would be at 108 percent dip down to 74 and 22 23 and then back up towards the end of the projection again this might be something that we could phase those changes or tier those changes in over time and not send, not make all the changes starting next year, but we could start another set maybe a year or two later, and not do them all at once. Uh, Willow Ridge uh, again, 50, 52 percent, 55, 58, up to the 70s. Uh, looking at the socioeconomic balance, Elkins would go from 26 percent down to 10. High Tower from 58 to 55. Marshall from 75 to 64. Ridge Point from 22 to 20, and Willow Ridge from 80 down to 67. Here's our composition data for option four. So looking at Elkins, we probably have about 63% uh, of those students being Elkins students, 37% uh, um, students that would have come from uh, Ridge Point. Uh, looking at High Tower, uh, probably 65, 66%, 34, 35% uh, from, from Ridge Point. Looking at Marshall, about, you know, a, again, we've got our 35-65 split, you know, 35% of the students would have gone to Elkins, uh, the other 1,477 students, uh, original Marshall students. 
again, a high or again, Ridge Point would maintain 100%. Looking at Willow Ridge, uh, you know, roughly 65, 68% of those students would be Willow Ridge students. And then we'd have uh, maybe a, a relatively low percentage, maybe seven or eight percent would have come from Elkins. This would be that, that Lake Olympia subdivision. And the remainder would be from Hightower. So what does option four do? This moves the current northern portion of Ridge Point to either Elkins or Hightower. Uh, the less developed southern portion would remain at Ridge Point. This utilizes the natural boundary of Siena Parkway to divide students between Elkins and Hightower. This does create some feeder splits at the elementary level, but they may be addressed when we talk about uh, additional changes when additional elementary schools come online. Uh, Elkins would reach 100% in 23, 24, uh, but moving the engineering academy could create some additional capacity at Elkins. We would increase utilization at Marshall and Willow Ridge, but this again would likely require some extensive changes when high school 12 opens due to um, all that growth pointed to uh, Ridge Point in the, the, with the southern portion of Ridge Point maintaining its current boundary. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation and learn more about the process and the options. I just want to hit a few key points before we uh, turn you over to complete the survey to provide your feedback. Uh, please remember that we are looking for detailed feedback related to these options. Um, we'd love to find rationale and the reasons why you support or do not support an option. Uh, that way we can develop recommendations that a lot closer to what the community wants. Uh, the survey is going to ask you to provide your level of support for each option as a package, as well as its component parts. Uh, that's also very important because there may be, you know, you may not like the option as a whole, but there may be pieces of it that you like. And so that kind of feedback will allow us to combine desirable components of options into recommendations. So again, as you're providing your feedback, remember the more detail you can provide us, the more useful it is to us as a district. So now I'll turn it over to Beth to talk about next steps. Thank you. As a reminder, our next steps include boundary presentations and feedback surveys that will be available online at fortbendisd.com slash boundary planning from December the 11th through January 2nd. Community meetings held on December 11th, 12th, and 13th will feature the same boundary presentation and feedback survey that will be posted online for any community members who wish to attend in person. Following the community engagement process, staff will study and consider all feedback from the community and possibly refine options further based on this community feedback. During January, we expect to take recommendations for the Elementary 51 boundary to the board for consideration, and in February, provide an update around the high school enrollment boundary planning process and provide recommendations for board consideration. Thank you very much for engaging in this very important work, for taking time to engage around the various boundary options, and most importantly, for providing feedback and input throughout this process.